Hello, my name is Joanne and I'm a junior at Centerville High School. Um, first, I want to thank everyone for attending and coming and being interested in my presentation. Hopefully it provides some insight and some, it's something that you can take away at least one thing from. So I'm going to be talking about what the significance of having tact as a writing tutor is. So let's begin. Okay, first, I want you to consider these questions. What do you value more in a person? Empathy or integrity? What about selflessness or trustworthiness? Kindness or honesty? So I want you to take a moment or two to kind of choose between one of these two choices with each one. Okay, now chances are what you chose is different than what the person next to you chose. In what you chose might kind of have come right off the bat, but for someone else it might be vaguely, really different. What about this question? How do you thrive as an individual at work? Do you value autonomy or structure? Do you have like, a lot of people involved in your work or practically none? Do you like having practical tasks in your job or do you prefer dealing with theoretical concepts and understanding them? So statistically, according to the Myers-Briggs Personality Theory application, 55.4% of people prefer structure over autonomy, 48.7% prefer lots of interaction and social interaction in the work environment, and 72.3% of people prefer practical tasks over analyzing theoretical, theoretical concepts. Now, why am I talking about this? Well, even with these two questions, it's very simply obvious that we are all very different. We have different maybe even contrasting preferences in the ways we approach and see the world. And so we're all very unique in the way that we deal with our surroundings and our environment. Now we will see why this is important later on. So my initial goal with my presentation for Swaka wasn't necessarily to prove that having tact is super important and is one of the most important uh, skills that's needed as a writing tutor. Initially, my goal for the project was to determine if there were any at all uh, traits that were apparent kind of throughout the top performing writing, tutor writing tutors. And it's only at my school because that's kind of like the access that I have. And so I kind of did a quick synopsis. Now, before I kind of delve into what I did to kind of see if I could analyze um, if there were any um, apparent traits, I want to kind of describe what I mean by top from performing writing tutors. So for the purpose of the study, this term refers to those that meet these three criteria. First, being able to bring a um, high latent retention rate of 2Ds. So what this means is that, um, so all the 2Ds fill out a Google form and one of the questions were, uh, would you be willing willing to come back? So uh, depending on those responses, we saw which one had the highest of the positive responses based on who they were being tutored by. And the second one criteria is which person provides the most um, positive 2D feedback. This is also this was also determined by Google Form, and so this was just you know positive descriptive norms and just no negativity involved, no um, necessarily any like um bad aspects in terms of the way that they themselves tutored and the third criteria is their demonstration of leadership skills and so and for this criteria um so essentially these people over 95 percent are or more of people involved in the writing center um, the moderators the teachers the students um were all very very um on set with the idea that these individuals, particular individuals, have great um, leadership skills and they embodied what it meant to be a good servant leader. Okay, so I asked these three students, these students are the people that, you know, were the most top performing writing um, tutors. So I just addressed Tyler Chubb and one that, means, that wants to remain anonymous. So I simply asked them what makes them have successful writing tutor sessions because based on my very limited research, they are the, one of the top performing writing tutors at my school. So here is what they said. Quote, my main goal as a tutor is to help. That's the plan. If I can make one person feel more confident about the writing, then that is success to me. I'm pretty honest when I tutor. I don't sugarcoat per se, but I do find myself dampening down a criticism that really should be more blunt than I make it seem. Compliment sandwiches are the bomb. The last thing I want for someone is to stress out about, stress out about being perfect and then be intimidated about writing. The key is to give feedback 
little by little so that they don't overwhelm themselves. Interesting. Okay, so from first glance, there might not be some underlying theme or trait that I've been looking for, but let's kind of reconsider that a little bit. Here I've highlighted and italicized some phrases that I feel kind of all combine and add to a theme in what makes a writing tutor successful. So for instance, if I can make one person feel more confident, then that is a success to me. I find myself damning down criticism that really should be more blunt than I make it seem. And the last person aims to not overwhelm their tutees. So something very kind of critical to note here is that all of these kind of allude to the tutor's desire to make the tutee internally feel better, not necessarily about their work or, you know, being having good writing skills or whatnot. They have this priority of ensuring that the tutor tutees themselves are at ease and that they're confident and that they're not, you know, too stressed out or worried, etc. So this brings me to the topic, what is tact? Now, all of these things that I've just mentioned all come together and they are what embody tact. So the word tact isn't really heavily used, you know, in this in this uh, common nature, but it is a common but a common phrase that really directly relates to the skill is emotional intelligence. And so I just wanted to put this out there, kind of indicating that tact, emotional intelligence is very, very intertwined. And it's just something, the word emotional intelligence is something that's going to be popping up, popping up a lot within this presentation. Okay, so let's kind of determine what tact is. So according to the dictionary, tact noun means adroitness and sensitivity in dealing with others. Now, this is a very short, concise, good definition, but I think that there could be you know, a little bit more analysis that we could do. So according to a psychologist, this tact is the property of the subject to adhere to a certain measure in a conversation, in committing acts, as well as the ability to assess the situation in advance and find an effective way to resolve conflicts without causing moral damage. A person who can act in accordance with the established norm of etiquette, regardless of the situation, is called tactful. So in other languages, the word tact can be translated to in Korean, Munchi, and in Chinese, don't really know how to read that, but I just wanted to really add these um, in there because I found that through research, I found that this word is, it kind of uh, better embodies what I mean in other languages. And I think this is very interesting to note. Um, I'm personally Korean and I've, this word is ex exactly what I mean, what the definition is exactly what kind of I'm looking for in what the word tact means. Uh, maybe a if you attach the sensitivity aspect to that, that will be the perfect definition. So these are all different definitions of what tact is. Now, hopefully you now understand what it means. So a very important aspect of tact is the idea of adapting to the world's unique differences. So we did the question little thing in the beginning. So the, the importance of that was the fact that we are all very different. And as a tutor, especially as a writing tutor, where you are helping people write their own unique sense and style and their own art and form, is that you need to be able to realize the importance of ensuring that you're adapting to the needs of your individual 2T, not your own. So here's where uh, a very important, important theory comes in. So uh, Carl Jung is a very famous psychologist and he made the person, he thought about the personality type theory. Essentially this theory states that um, all individuals have very specifically unique personality preferences, uh, which influence our way of um, many of our behaviors. Um, these preferences are our way of interacting with the world and making decisions. So Carl Jung's four specific personality preferences. I'm going to be going over this. The reason is to kind of realize that tutors, tutees alike, we all have these preferences. And so as a tutor, you need to ensure that what you are doing with your work is not necessarily based on your own preferences, but based on what your tutee is preferring and their way of approaching the world. So I'm going to go over these really quickly. Um, this is this is what the MBTI test, if you are familiar with it, um, stands for. So I'm just going to be going over it really quickly. 
First is extroversion versus introversion. How do I gain energy? How do I work the most efficiently? Do I gain energy from other people or do I gain energy from being by myself? Number two is sensing versus intuition. And this kind of um, falls into how you analyze the world. People who have a strong sensing function, um, they kind of focus more on the details and honing in on the specifics. So for instance, they really like step-by-step -step guidelines when completing tasks. But on the other hand, people who are intuition-based, they tend to kind of think more abstractly um, with, they kind of have uh, like patterns and seeing things from a broader picture, um, abstract concepts, connecting them, connecting knowledge. That's how they see the world. Uh, the next is thinking versus feeling. This kind of, I, I don't, I guess you could say kind of refers to what your biggest priority is, but essentially just do you prefer logic or emotion? Uh, people who are thinking tend to prefer more logic um, and people who are feeling debased tend to kind of um, think, uh, or think more about like the emotion and how they are impacting others with their decisions. Judging versus perceiving, um, are you more orderly or spontaneous? In which environment do you thrive in? So let's get an example of how these particular preferences can influence a 2D in their work and how they function. So for instance, extroversion versus introversion. So Mary Maid is an extrovert and he describes his writing style as, quote, I flip from office to office talking to anyone who will put up with me and to use a colleague's phrase, I rapidly suck energy from all my colleagues. Once I reach the point where I feel ready to begin composing, I return to my own office, sit down, and all of a sudden words just start to pour out. So evident, it's very evident that this person is a big extrovert. And so why this is important to you as a tutor is to kind of realize how much verbal involvement or how much uh, direct involvement is necessary to help the 2T unleash its fullest potential. Now, this does not mean, um, you know, not giving enough as much help to introverts as opposed to extroverts, but it's kind of referring to the way you tutor an individual and ensuring that the tutor is, the 2T is feeling confident in the way that they are getting help. So for instance, people who are extroverts might find most, most comfort and um, success when they, you know, constantly talk with you and socialize and you've given as much input as you can and, you know, just continue battering. But people who are more introverted might tend to kind of, you know, like take things on their own. You can provide insight, you can provide feedback, but don't try to hone in them with like, you know, a lot of talking, um, especially if they're very, really introverted. Another example, sensing versus intuition. So sensing individuals, they may struggle with grasping the concept. And, and on the other hand, people who are intuition based may struggle with grasping the details. So this is very important to note because it's it's important that where you focus your attention during your tutor sessions is where you, your 2D needs the most amount of work and time. So if you know that your tutor is, if you know that your 2D is more into, you know, details, not really looking at the big picture, you want to focus your energy on helping that tutor 2D finish their um, their, their ideas and get their ideas out thoroughly. So again, this theory is applicable to both ends of the spectrum. It impacts the tutor, 2T as well as a tutor. So now let's look at how this may impact a tutor's teaching style. So what if a tutor was more thinking over feeling? What if a tutor was more judging over perceiving? How might this impact a tutor? So again, this theory is applicable to both ends of the spectrum for both tutors and for tutees. So let's kind of look at how this might impact a tutor's teaching style. So let's think, what if a tutor was more thinking over feeling? What if a tutor was more judging than perceiving? How would this impact the way that the tutor tutors? And how would this impact the way that the 2 finds find success in the session? What if the 2D has the opposing personality preference? Then what happens? These are all questions that we are dealing with when we are talking about the importance of tact. So some benefits to having tact to the 2D include that it helps them gain confidence. It helps them gain the desire slash interest to prove or learn more. It helps them spread kindness and positivity. It helps them being more or less prone to, burn, writing, to writing burnout. Um, and it helps them be more comfortable in the session, which allows them to focus all their attention on the aspect of being better at writing.
And there are also benefits to having tact to the tutor. So some benefits to having tact as a tutor is to is the, the idea that they they are we they are able to gain more a higher likely retention rate, they feel more fulfilled, they can establish this reputation or this idea of being a very likable character, which can enhance their image. They can learn how to better empathize and connect with different types of people, which obviously can help you, you know, in your future, especially if you're a high schooler. And it can help you avoid tutor 2D conflicts. We don't like conflicts and those really are something that we do not want to come across as our during our experience with writing tutors. So how can we implement tact? Now it's now it's very obvious that having tact is very important because it can help us with so many aspects of the writing tutor session. So the idea of tact though is very nuanced because there isn't a one rule fits all kind of situation going here on how we can achieve this skill. It's something that we need to kind of apply through practice and based on the situation. But there are some scenarios that are, there are some, sorry, there are some rules that we can live by in order to ensure that the way we implement tact is a success. So first we want to analyze the student. And by this, I don't really mean like, you know, like actually like act like you're analyzing it, but not necessarily in that aspect, but kind of getting, you know, first, second look, what is the student like? Try to understand who the student is, not be, not judging off of essentially like stereotypes, but kind of based on clues. So this kind of goes into the second rule, use the first impression to gauge what the student's like. So some context clues that you can use are body language. Is this 2D feeling very you know, like disinterested, like not wanting to be in this, is the 2T very excited? What is the situation? Did the teacher force the 2T to come? Is the 2T here because he just wants to be here? Is he actually interested? Does he want to talk with his friends who are getting tutored? What is the situation here going on? There's so many different context clues that you can use to kind of learn right off the bat what the tutor 2T is like. And so this will really help you with your uh, tutor session. So another rule is that you must listen to your student. Now this is, you know, very obvious and you probably already listen to your student, but the importance here is that you listen more than you talk. And this might be natural, especially the fact that you're a writing tutor, but a lot of tutors that I know that me tend to kind of emphasize their own opinions and what they know is right, rather than having the 2T talk more. This is a very important aspect of um, all types of tutoring that must be um, carried out in order to make the session effective. And then you must also internally determine one selfless broad goal. So what I mean by selfless broad goal is we want it to be selfless. So what is this one goal that you ha can have in mind that relates to how your 2D can be benefited from this session? So this is not something that you like really think a lot of or all these steps. It should just come by really naturally. So I'm going to uh, go over an example later on like after the slide, about how we can do this. Um, but we do also want to make it broad. Like, you know something, uh, you know the student. So what is something that you could do to help that student during the session based on their individual and unique needs? And then you're going to work toward that goal through subtly shifting the tone or verbalization of your answers and feedback um, in order to kind of help achieve that goal. So this is important to know that it's not like you're not manipulating them. You're not um, also, you, as last sentence connotes, you're not faking yourself. You're still being yourself, and you're you know you're being kind. Obviously, you're you're just being yourself and saying what you need to say. But the way you communicate it is going to be different based on what you know the two T needs. So let's look at an example. So here are all the rules in this slide, and then I kind of had like some examples here. So. This is an actual scenario that occurred to me, and I put this on here because this Chutis told me that he uh, really enjoyed the session and that he really wants to come back, um, and this was very shocking to hear because we'll see why. So first, analyzing the student. So the student came in, and he very evidently showed signs that he was very disinterested. You know, he was reluctant with it. Um, tries to hard to be cool. I guess he was, he's a freshman, you know, he's there um, just because his teacher forced him to be there and he just doesn't want to be there. It's very obvious to any eye. Um, um, so 
this the second part the student tells me that he did none of his assigned english work for his assignments and you you know see for yourself he did not complete anything that was supposed to be due in like over a month um he is in regular honor regular english class as opposed to honors in our ap um and then also like in the in the beginning of recession a teacher suddenly walks in and tells him to get his stuff done so and then his friend also comes in um sometime in and then starts laughing at the fact that he's getting you know he's in a writing tutor center whatever so these kind of small clues can kind of tell us that you know he is might be someone that's you know kind of maybe struggling uh academically maybe mentally and he is something someone that you really want to focus on in a specific goal and for me that was to build his confidence so the thing that i realized was that with individuals who feel disinterested or who feel you know burnt, who don't want to do any work it kind of stems from a root of this idea of having low confidence or low, low self-esteem in this endeavor so i really wanted to do my best to ensure that make him realize that he is not lacking in any aspect um he it's all up to you know his ambition and what he's willing to put in but even with that drive that only comes with kind of an inherent confidence that must be developed through these um interactions so um then after i realized that i added many um, you know compliments now these weren't like just any compliments they were you know authentic sounding they were actual genuine compliments um i might have a little overdone them but nonetheless it is um an effort to help him realize that he is you know he's good and he's smart and i just did this in a very cool manner not trying to show that you know i'm trying to give him compliments because i want to give him compliments just being you know being genuine in this aspect um and the last thing it's also important to note here that I did not, you know, prioritize having the students' validation over me having to change my values slash morals, or I didn't, you know, say any wrong, unhelpful advice or all that. So an example of this would be saying, you know, this certain aspect of your piece is really good when, you know, it should be fixed and it's really bad. So there is a line that, that cannot be crossed. So let's take some look at some examples. So if a 2D shows signs of high sensitivity, then you can. Here are some examples that I just, uh, you know, this is what I thought. Make an extra effort to ensure your critiques are coming off in a negative way. But I want you to think of what you could do if a 2D shows signs of high sensitivity. Maybe, you know, they're very timid. Maybe, you know, they you tr you did make a comp critique and they took it the wrong way so what would you do in this scenario as a tutor to ensure that your 2d feels comfortable and um, excited to learn so what if your 2d shows sense of being you know embarrassed to be at the writing center maybe like she didn't like like her piece like what would you do um in my ass in my scenario i would make an effort to kind of seem chill you know cool and like you know like I don't really care that kind of person. I feel like in if I were if I was a tutee, that kind of person would be the most helpful in that situation. And this is kind of a fun counterintuitive example. Um, so if a tutee shows signs of being extremely shy, I think what I would do is I would make an extra effort to show that I don't really care about the way that they act because you know I don't want them to you know overanalyze things. So I would kind of aim to show that. I do not have tact, you know, I just don't care. And like, I don't, I'm not analyzing you. So this might be, you know, overboard, but this just kind of proves the idea that tact can really be versatile and applicable to many different situations and scenarios and different types of individuals. Um, so it applies to both personality preferences, styles, and situational emotions. So situational emotions like embarrassment, you know, fear, and then also personality preferences like the different types that we went over and also, you know, just those basic personality styles that all of us have. However, there are some limitations of tact. Um, I've done some research and this is what I have come up with. In a tutor setting, there it is crucial to establish a sense of power and authority. Um, obviously, you know, in a kind and like a logical sense, not like, you know, dictatorship or whatever. Not dictatorship, but like not like in a mean way. But you want to make sure that um, you do have this sense of authority in your session because you are the tutor and you are tutoring that person. So you want to make sure that um, that is the case. But if you think about it, implementing tact um, a lot is 
you're essentially rendering yourself as inferior to the 2D because you are you yourself are subtly adjusting your actions to fit the interest of the other um, subject. And so in this way, I believe that you are actually kind of viewing yourself as inferior. And so what does this mean? You want to kind of you want to be, you know, superior in, in a good way. You want to feel, you know, have authority. So there are there limitations to tact? This is a question that's um that I've been that's really debated. I mean, probably not really debated, but it is very interesting to think about. So what I believe is that there is a certain extent to through to which you should implement tact. So this is where the limitations of tact come into play. You want to make sure that through implementing tact, you're not, you know, feeling socially burnt out. Um, the, it's not leading you to an unsuccessful tutoring session where the 2D does not learn anything and you're instead, you know, sucking up and being passive to the 2D. Um, you, don't, you don't also want to be misunderstood, treated or misunderstood by the 2D. Maybe you try to, you know, act a certain way for the 2D's sake, but it kind of turned out the wrong way. And so, again, it's very important to note that this information of this particular skill is very nuanced and takes a lot of practice and intuition to ensure that your intentions shine through um, while not impacting other aspects of the session that could be avoided. So the conclusion is that there are many different characteristics, obviously, that constitute great writers, but um, tact is something that must be kind of delved into further. We first looked at my little, you know, research thing with the top performing writers at my school and what they said and an underlying theme, which was tact. Learning more about tact and what it is, and then also how to implement it, and also its limitations and what we can do to ensure that we make the most of this art. Um, but ultimately, this comes from realizing the purpose of your work as a writing tutor. It is to benefit the lifelong skills and confidence of your two team. Especially if you are a high schooler, I believe it's really important that being a peer tutor is very effective in um, building the confidence and just um, the thirst and drive of learning for your fellow peers. So that is the end of my uh, insight presentation about the significance of tact. Um, I do want to clarify and note that I do, and I am aware that I did not have a lot of, you know, um, statistically probably like uh, un correct or unbiased um, research. Um, it was really insanely difficult to try to find or um, find any. So um, hopefully you guys enjoyed my talk or my presentation regardless and took something away from it. And that is my end of my presentation. So thank you so much.